All right, welcome. So this week's tutorial comes to us from our new class, how to create abstract art in Affinity Designer. So if you like what you see and you want more of turning actual physical materials into digital assets, check out the link below for a special offer for our YouTube family. Other than that, let's go ahead and roll those credits. Right, folks welcome back to this course so this is a lesson on a resource now we're going to talk about color in previous lectures we set up a palette based on a photo so the colors were kind of already decided for us however there's a really cool tool out there and it comes from Adobe don't worry you don't need a subscription you don't need to sign up it is completely free go ahead and type in Adobe color into Google and the first thing that's going to come up is color.adobe.com. Now, colors, there's a whole science to it, more so than we can ever do in a short video here. But there are different relationships between colors. So if you want to add some dynamics to your art, you can use what are called color chords or color schemes. So on Adobe Color, you've got many different color schemes or color chords. So let's say you wanted to do a monochromatic piece of art. Monochromatic means there are various shades and let's say variations on the same hue. So you can create any sort of monochromatic scheme that you want, right? Simply by dragging the colors around. So you see that while they are all different tones, tints or shades of purple, that they all kind of match and they're all along the same hue. Now you could click on triadic. So let's say that you like this purple. You could go with the triadic color scheme where it would hold the purple, but now a triadic color scheme takes the color wheel and actually divides it into thirds for lack of a better term. And you can see now you can pull these different handles in wherever you want, but if you rotate the handle, it still maintains that 120 degree relationship so that you're not violating the triadic chord. So there are a lot of relationships you can look at here with Adobe Color. Complementary is one that people use all the time in fine art or especially in like an art deco situation. If you hit complementary, let's say that I like this green, right? This is a bold green and now I'm gonna hit complementary. Now, if I grab this bold green again, notice that it takes the bold green and it pulls the colors directly 180 degrees from it so that you're getting this complementary setup. One of the things in later lessons we're gonna talk about is the role of dynamics in art. You want your art to be seen from across the room in this instance, and so a complementary color scheme is absolutely essential if you want to do that. You don't want colors that are too close. Now, you can get by without this drastic change. Let's look at analogous. Now, what analogous is going to do is it's going to take this color wheel and it's going to subdivide it almost like a slice of pie. So that as you move around, all the colors that it's going to give you are next to each other in a way. So. This is kind of perfect because you can get some blues and you can get some purples. And so you get that dynamicism without actually having to be so across the color wheel from one another. Now, that's the first thing that comes up. Now, let me show you where this is in Affinity Designer. So stay with me. If you were to go to the swatches panel and we were to dock this back in. Now, we're going to bring up the color panel. The color panel now has an option create color chord now look at it's got the same thing so whatever color is selected so let's say we've got the red selected and let's say we're working with the color wheel now there's orange right orangish red let's go ahead and just do this so that it's a little bit more pronounced what is 180 degrees across from red on the color wheel that aqua blue area right so let's go ahead and do this create a color chord and what do you think is going to happen when we add complementary as a color chord watch the swatches panel down below 
it now added the complementary color to whatever palette that we had. Now, I don't want that, so I'm going to right click, I'm going to delete it. So what you could do, let's bring up the swatches, if you wanted to begin your exploration of color from a color cord, you could come in, we could create a new palette. So let's create a new document palette. We'll just call it unnamed, that's fine. Let's grab a purple color, let's say. Notice how we're using the color and the swatches. And now let's create a color cord. Now if I create a color cord and I go for an analogous, it's going to give me a little bit of blue and it's going to give me a little bit of red. Yep, there it is because it took this color and went, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go a little bit more over here. Now, let's go ahead and do one more here. Let's go ahead and do green and let's do a triadic. Now, if it's green, where do the other ends of the rectangle meet? Or the triangle, I'm sorry. In the red and the blue, right? Boom. Green, blue, red. Because this is where we were. There's the blue. There's the red. So this is a nice way to create palettes from similar color cords. Now, there's one more trick here. If you wanted to, you could come in and create a color cord. And you could work in tints. So tints match the color with varying shades of white. So watch this. We're going to work in green. So this is bright green, right? Come over to the color cord. Come over to tints. And now look at all of the different greens that it created there around tints. We can do the same thing with, let's go ahead and do shades. Now if tints are white, what are shades going to be? different areas of black with the greens. Look at all the different colors of black mixed with those greens, all the different shades. And the last one here, color cord, tones, mix the color with gray. And there's all your different tones. So you can use color cords. You could use Adobe color. And the last thing that I wanted to show you to get super specific with color. If you find something here on Adobe Color that you like, say you really love this color of blue, you can come down here and you can choose the CMYK, which is what print colors work with, RGB, which is what monitor colors work with, or you can use the hex code here. Let's go ahead and copy this hex code. And now I'm going to come over here. Now watch this. We're going to come over to the color. We're going to work on the slider box. <clears throat> now you see in the slider box, RGB hex. Put the hex code right inside of here. Now what was it? 3D86FF. And there is the blue that we had on Adobe Color. Now, if you wanted to do it by RGB, let's go ahead and mess this up. All right, now we're somewhere in the greens. Awesome. So now RGB, right? We come over here, we go strictly RGB. And if we got the RGB code, 61, 134, 255. 61, 134, 255. There we go with the exact same color of blue. Now you can bring that into your palette. So in this lesson, we showed you how to create color cords, how to think about color from a dynamic perspective, how to create these color cords into separate palettes in Affinity Designer. And if you found a color that you really liked on a different site, how you could go through and match it exactly using the hex code, using RGB, and if you wanted to work in print, they have the same codes for CMYK. All right, let's go ahead and cut it on this one.